Boom Tank Business Show, episode 75. This is a great milestone for the show and a new level of Boom Tank. For the past month, I've totally up leveled the behind the scenes of Boom Tank, the podcast, and coming live streams. Lots of work and growth. Sometimes you simply have to stop and get that big work done to fully accommodate the next level. Take time in your life to stop and build your next amazing pieces and take full action on them. My four signature programs are really rolling. My clients are super amazing and taking fast, big action with. With big results. Contact me if you're interested. I'd love to talk with you. And please go to boomtank.com to subscribe and instantly access new free audio training, top 10 life and business lessons from my expert guests, and a success meditation you will love. Today's global superstar is none other than the Stacy Shefflin. Stacy was a highly successful international Ford model for 20 years before becoming a global beauty expert and multi millionaire businesswoman. Stacy is co founder of Women's. Leadership Live together with other co-founders Linda McMahon, a recognized billionaire business creator and head of the U.S. government Small Business Administration and co-founder Debbie Saviano, a renowned social media expert. Stacy is also CEO of YBF Beauty LLC, which is your best friend beauty and the model's prefer product line. Get this, Stacy has sold an amazing $300 million of her products and apparel on Home Shopping Network works around the world. In fact, the work of Women's Leadership Live is almost like Shark Tank, but a lot nicer. Women's Leadership Live helps female inventors of customer solution products take their products to a global market and can include selling one's products on home shopping networks globally. And if you know a female product inventor, please have them contact me, carolyn at boomtank.com. I can help coordinate early steps for them with Women's Leadership Live. Here's part of Stacy's official bio. This is so incredibly impressive. Stacy has engineered a 20-year record of success as the number one global cosmetic line in direct sales on six networks in 11 countries. This success includes, as I said before, $300 million in cosmetic and apparel sales. Stacy is frequently sought by national magazines such as Allure, L, Good Housekeeping, Marie Claire, and Fitness. This is so exciting and there is so much in this one. Let's get started. Copyright 2018, Boom Tank Media, LLC, fully enforced. Welcome to the Boom Tank Business Show for sharp female entrepreneurs and businesswomen who are ready to shine. A show about more freedom, more income, less worries, and cutting-edge information for you to create and grow your business. From branding to social media, marketing to the latest technologies, we've got you covered. Now, here's your host, Carolyn Cole. To the Boom Tank Business Show for sharp female entrepreneurs and cool guys who support them. This is a show about building your business and your personal development. Why personal development? Because your personal growth is the biggest key to your business success. I'm your show host, Carolyn Cole, founder and business owner of BoomTank.com. I was a Fortune 100 and Fortune 200 company senior trial attorney. Now I make the case on behalf of your business dreams and happiness too. I help executives, high level teams, entrepreneurs, and business owners with their business and personal development needs. I'm also an organization development consultant. Consultant, a business strategist, an entrepreneur, podcast show host, live streamer, professional speaker, and certified professional coach. Contact me to discuss your individual group and or team needs. My premier success and personal development coaching is included in all of my packages. Contact me to learn more about my four trademark signature programs. Winning in business for business owners and entrepreneurs struggling to shift gears and reach that next exciting level with confident visibility and correctly priced business offerings. Life redesign with business in mind for professionals contemplating starting their own business. Life redesign with happiness in mind for executives and professionals seeking a happiness reboot and claim your expert celebrity for professionals, business owners, and entrepreneurs ready to confidently get seen and get heard. This program is included in my other super successful signature programs or as a standalone package. You choose media one sheet included. Go to boomtank.com and click on my coaching consulting tab to read more and to book a session with me to discuss your needs or email me carolyn at boomtank.com. Let's talk about designing a package that expertly meets your needs.
website. And to book me as your next professional speaker, podcast show guest, or other featured guest, click the speaking tab on Boomtank.com to send me a request or email me, Carolyn at Boomtank.com. I speak on a variety of business and inspirational topics and would love to hear from you. Now, back to the show, Boomtank.com. So completely honored to have today's guest, Stacy Shefflin, on the show. Stacy, I've got to tell you, before I even get into your introduction, I'm over the moon honored to have you on the show today. Oh, Carolyn, you're so kind. All my honored. I mean, we could be we could be each other's fan club because I've listened to you and I just love everything that you bring to the airwaves. People just really, really get you because you're just so transparent. Thank you so much for having me. It's such an honor. Oh, well, you, you are just super sweet, and the honor is all mine because wait till the audience hears this background on you, and I'll tell you, I just, I'm just still almost speechless with everything you have done with your life, and we're going to get into this. So here is your official bio. Stacy is a business gal's best friend. She is founder at Women's Leadership Live, the founder and CEO of YBF, Your Best Friend Beauty, LLC, and Models Prefer Beauty. With hands-on experience in vital aspects of entrepreneurship and business development, such as product creation and design, marketing, logistics, and operations. She is a market disruptive business leader, and boy is she ever. Stacy is deeply soulful. I love that. An entrepreneur centric with over 24 years of experience and hundreds of hours and millions of dollars in live TV retail sales globally. Under her direction, a team of product curators work diligently to drive economic development and personal prosperity for all. It is the mission of the Women's Leadership Live team to collaborate and support passionate entrepreneurs that create customer solutions based products. Stacy has engineered a 20 year record of success as the number one global cosmetic line in direct sales on six networks in 11 countries. Home Shopping Network in the US, QVC in the UK, TSC in Canada, TVSN Australia, New Zealand, HSE 24 Italy, HSE 24 Germany, and Citrus TV in Dubai, with over $300 million in cosmetic and apparel sales. That is absolutely amazing. Stacy is known for forging a highly personal relationship with her girlfriends and consumers. She is frequently sought by national magazines such as Allure, Elle, Good Housekeeping, Marie Claire, and Fitness. Stacy began her career as an international model before becoming a beauty expert and businesswoman. With Ford Models for 20 years, today Stacy is an award-winning business creator. Woohoo! Stacy is also a contributing <laughs> Stacy is also a contributing author, highly sought after spokesperson, motivational keynote speaker, and girlfriend to millions of viewers and customers through her beauty brands. Once again, an official welcome for Stacy Shefflin to the Boom Tank Business Show. Thank you so much for joining us today, Stacy. Oh, thank you so much. I'm so honored. I don't even know who that is that, <laughs> that you're that speaking is you. about. You know, in your life you never think you can accomplish much but you do when you have such an incredible team of people around you and you never do it alone and I have to say starting off my husband is an English Harvard graduate from a <laughs> from a great university and he wrote that bio because he knows how to write and I so couldn't write that so he makes me sound better than I truly am <laughs> I think you're equally wonderful and hats off to him for equally wonderful copy he is a oh, gem well you. done well done yeah he's a good writer he is I pulled this off of the women's leadership live website and I said some of this earlier I'm going to say it again just so we can anchor this in for our beginning it is the mission of the women's leadership live team to collaborate and and support passionate entrepreneurs who create customer solutions based products women's leadership lives driving principle is to build a world where women obtaining and exercising power is both expected and commonplace what a truly noble aim that is Stacy please tell us more if you will about women's leadership live and your work with WLL it's been a dream in the making I mean for our being on television and with our shopping channels Carolyn for over 24 years we really realized that the most difficult thing for entrepreneurs is to stay focused and they have the drive and they have the vision and the dream but the focus was what we always found as we went to our conferences and we met women from around the world and a lot of men came to our conferences we called them enlightened men i like your your point that you call them cool enlightened men which is really great because they are cool when they really want to hear how women do things how we think how we process, I mean, we're all different and we do things different, but the male and female to that 
is totally different. So when you have the gender of the male factor in the room, really wanting to see how women think and work, it's very inspirational to us as women that we all understand one another and vice versa. But what we wanted to bring to those that came to our conferences, it was a place that was safe, that could, people could come and be mentored. And when they left an event, or one of our American Dreams now, what we call our American Dreams events with our free academy, that they actually took the tools and the strategies along with them. We can all go to a conference and we all have, and we get jacked up and we're so excited. We come home after two or three days and then guess what, we're all by ourselves. So we wanted something that would be sustainable and we could help complement people in their businesses so that they knew they had mentors with them along the way. Tell us, if you would, please, about your personal work with QVC and the Home Shopping Network and how the TV Home Shopping Network started. I know you want to speak to the industry today and how all of it ties in with Women's Leadership Live and your partnership with the HSN American Dreams Academy. I was on QVC for 12 glorious years and 10 wonderful years on HSN, both Love of My Life networks, because they've really given me a platform and a passion to do what I, that I, what I love to do, and that's connect one-on-one -on -one in live real time with a consumer on television which it, brick and mortar is great but you can't get anything like you get an experience like you can when you're on live tv and people can call in and make purchases and ask you questions qvc purchased in the end of 2017 last q4 the, the last quarter of the year they purchased hsn they had a percentage of hsn through, for a few years that wasn't really commonplace i don't think it was really ever talked about much but after the at the end of the year they decided to go ahead collaborate bring it all under one roof hsn and qvc together so now qvc which is liberty media owns both our networks and what's wonderful about it is we can the networks now can bounce many things off one another and kind of hopefully save cost on doing what they do which is bring television to network and syndication so it's been a great marriage for the two to come together HSN uh, has a smaller market or footprint than QVC has. QVC has always been the larger domain, if you want to say, for viewership. HSN being second and Evine out in Minnesota being third. So there are three heavy hitter players in the TV shopping industry. There are other smaller networks that are down in Tennessee and Kentucky that are small, maybe specialized in jewelry or coins or knives. Everybody has their specialty when they're smaller network. But the three top players are QVC, HSN, and Evine. And when you go to those networks, it can be all consuming. It's like, you're so excited to get there. You're so excited to get, hopefully get a buyer's meeting. But then you're like, now it's a lot of work. How do I go through? It's a process. It's a, it's a, it's entrenched process because it, it has to be done so uh, when we're so big, it has to be done right. You can't just go in and think you're going to do this on your own. You're re people really need help, and that's what we saw. So HSN asked uh, a few, we feel all very blessed. There's six of us, and we're called Star Entrepreneurs. And uh, the likes of Bob Sercostas, who was the father and, and of the home shopping industry 40 sub plus years ago with a can opener. He went to radio, sold 1,500 can openers, said, oh my God, if I can do this on radio, nobody can see it. I could certainly do it on TV. And that all began our industry. He went on television, bought some small spots of TV, like small commercials, if you have it, what we'd call an infomercial today, and started our industry and was an overnight success. So he's one of the star entrepreneurs. We have Mark uh, Portney, who's also a star entrepreneur. He has his own show on, on television called Makers, and he works with inventors. You've got Damon John, who a lot of us all know and appreciate all his effort. He's one of the sharks on Shark Tank and an amazing creator and curator of products and great business mind. And then you've got uh, Randy Zuckerberg, who in her own right has been an author, incredible, powerful woman in tech, loves to help other people with small business ideas that seem kind of like they're kind of off the chart different. She kind of thinks out of the box when it comes to that. So she's really brilliant in that field. She maybe got that along with some of the work that she did helping her brother, uh, Mark Zuckerberg, they own Facebook, and she's now separated and has her own entity as a woman on her own. And then uh, you have me. <laughs> so Stacey Shecklin, I and I represent Women's Leadership Live as our team with those star entrepreneurs. And our whole guiding force is bringing people 
and their products to television. So you have six star entrepreneurs under the American Dreams umbrella, and we have an academy called the American Dreams Academy. And we are going to have it in three more cities across the country. We've already had one in D.C., and that was at the American University in D.C. Our second one was just recently, uh, less than 60 days ago. We had it at the University of Tampa in Tampa, Florida, and that was incredible because they built and helped build the curriculum for all of these events we have across the nation. They're one of the large sponsors with HSN, as well as another company called Corky, who works with inventors and bringing their product and mission to network, but really on the production and licensing side. So we've all taken this concept. If you take it like a Shark Tank concept, but mix it with education and curriculum, that's the concept. Two days of curriculum, one day of pitching. So that's how we've come together with HSN and American Dreams. So if you go to the Women's Leadership Live dot com website and you see American Dreams on there, that's the explanation, all of it combined. Terrific. Thank you for all of that. Show notes for this episode over on BoomTank.com are going to contain all of the links Stacy talks about in this episode today. Go there, grab that link, and investigate. How did you put all of this together, Stacy? Well, I'm very blessed. I have two amazing partners. Linda McMahon was our in the very beginning of how we put Women's Leadership Life together was one of the co-founders. It was Linda McMahon, who's now holds a, a seat in President Trump's cabinet as one of four women. She is the head of the SBA now. She's the head of the Small Business Administration. So she's now Administrator McMahon. She lives and works out of D.C. Uh, and runs an entity like so large, thousands of thousands of offices across the country for the Small Business Administration and SCORE offices and so much information they give at those offices. I welcome people to walk into your Small Business Administration office across the country and talk to people in SCORE and at the SBA offices. There are wealth of information. Linda built her first empire with her husband, Vince McMahon. So it was Linda and Vince McMahon that built the empire of WWE and World Wrestling Entertainment. And then Linda, after almost three decades of being CEO, where she was the business side, and she took the company public on, on Wall Street in such a way that no one had ever seen an entertainment company come together, especially with all the players that are involved, being television network syndications. And it's a global brand, you know, over, over I'd say over 120 countries spoken in 30 languages. So Linda was our CEO at the time before she was asked to serve at the hand of the president in working with SBA. My other partner, our other partner and best friend is Debbie Saviano, and she's a social media strategist. So she's all about building influence. She says ROI, your return on your influence instead of investment, which your influence is your investment. But if you look at it in the social media world, like think of all your social media handles, your, your Facebook, your Twitter, your Instagram, everything that you do on social media, Debbie is proficient at it. And after being a teacher for 30 years and a principal for many high schools, K through K through 12th grade in Texas, she retired. Her and her husband were both educators. He was also a principal for that many years as well. They retired. She goes, I can't just sit around. I've always been an educator. I've always been a teacher. I want to continue to learn. I'm a life learner and I want to teach other people how to learn. What, am, what is it that I really want to be up on? Well, she knew it was social media. It was something her generation, my generation, we didn't come, we weren't raised knowing that. So she went out and educated herself with a couple of guys she met online. I mean, Chris Brogan, all these really incredible people that understand what uh, social media is all about and how to reach and engage and interact with people and how to better our world, better your business, better yourself. She really connected with people. A couple of guys from MIT that were young in their 20s, they taught her everything they knew and it was more than she could have ever believed. And so now, that's what she was doing when I met her. She was doing social media and building people's LinkedIn profiles for them in corporate America and being paid so much money to do it because she's an expert in the field. And I said, you know, really, I want to put a company together. I really want to empower women. And I've met you and you're all about empowering women and inspiring and motivating. And I have a friend and I want you to meet her. And I didn't tell her who it was. It was Linda. And I said, we've got to go to Connecticut. But then we ran it past our husbands, Phil and David. And they're like, you know what? I love your idea. It's a great concept. 
said, before you go and sit in front of Linda, she wasn't working at the White House at the time, I said, you really need to have your plan together. You really need to know what you're asked for advice. We were just going as a friend to a friend. I just want your advice, Linda. If you could just help me tell Debbie and I, if you think what we have is interesting. So we all, David helps us put together the business plan, which you always have to have someone that really knows that. I mean, that's just a, a whole, if you're going to put together a business and you don't have it on paper, you're just never going to get it off the ground. And we went and sat in front of Linda and as a friend, I said, Linda, just give us 15 minutes. We just want your opinion. We want to hear what you have to say. And Debbie found out who we're going to see. And she goes, she goes oh my gosh, you didn't tell me we're going to see Linda McMahon, the Linda McMahon. You know, I mean, they've raised billions of dollars and made billions of dollars in their companies. And I'm like, well, look, I didn't want you to get nervous. I just wanted you to be like you are with me. And she was, she was so, Debbie was such a natural in presenting the social media side. I presented my side, which was take your product to retail. How do you commercialize an idea or concept or an invention that you have? And then David was there and he became our managing director. But in the meantime, Linda's listening and now 15 minutes has turned into 30 minutes. And she says, you know what? This idea sounds so good. I just don't want to give you advice. I want to be in. It never happens. It just now you just you just want people's advice. And then all of a sudden you hear a really smart woman say to you, I think your idea is really great and it's so great. I want to be involved. How do I get in? And so the three of us started the company together with David's help and support on the business side and us started conferences two and a, almost three years ago now. So we had two huge conferences, one in Texas, one in Utah. They were beautiful, five star. I mean, best speakers, great round tables, great breakouts, great panel discussion. It was incredible, incredible, incredible. But what we learned was even though we get together as women and enlightened men at a conference, once again, once you leave it, people don't know what the takeaway is. What's the takeaway? We could get, we gave them workbooks. You give people tools, but they really need people to walk alongside them. So our, our conference business turned into Oh, we're not really a conference business. We really, that's just the icing on the cake. Those are wonderful events to have, but they're not really meaningful to the people that are coming that need you. So that's when we branched off from the Women's Leadership Live conference format. Our new business model became what we have now with HSN and the American Dreams Academy, which is teaching and still letting people pitch, which we let people pitch at our conference and we gave away money and, and mentorships packages that were free and give cash away to people, but it wasn't the same as when we have the academy now and people can actually learn and hear from an attorney, a business plan writer, a, a social media people, inventors, patent attorneys. I mean, we have them all sitting in the room. We only choose from 100 to 150 people when they go on our website, when we have our next one, I'll let you be the first to know, Carolyn, so you can share it with your listeners. But that's when people really learn. And then those, usually about 90 of the 100 to 150 people that we choose to come, 90 people pitch. And then we have incredible judges panels and we really pick the cream of the cream that we really know can be successful and really are actually want to be life learners. They want to learn and they're open to learning and taking their product to market. That's how all Linda and Debbie and I came together and how Women's Leadership Live turned into American Dreams. Thank you on behalf of women and female entrepreneurs and inventors everywhere. Just amazing what you've pulled together for them. Do you have time to share with us a little of your backstory because we heard that great story leading up to Women's Leadership Live about how you arrived at the place where you are today? I was very blessed for over 20 plus years to be an international model with Ford Model as my mother agency in New York City. And throughout that time, I traveled all over the world. I was in 54 countries. I was blessed to do 24 covers and walk the catwalks for the most amazing designers. In New York, I, I loved it. Ralph Lauren, Bill Blass, Halston. I mean, all the big brands, Donna Karen. It was the best time of my life. And this is, we're talking the 80s and 90s, okay? So then I was in Paris, and I was the house model for Dior. So Mark Bowen was the designer at the time, and I was his muse, and he draped fabrics on me for eight hours a day, seven days a week. I mean, I never stopped working. It was the most incredible thing. I lived in Paris for 10 years, and then I was the house model for Karl Lagerfeld at Chanel, a house model for uh, Yves Saint Laurent. That was incredible every moment of that Nina Ricci so I got to work with the house the main houses and actually be in on the very beginning of a con
concept to completion. And I think that's what I found a love in. Not just walking the catwalks. Yeah, I did all the designer shows. I mean, everybody, Ungaro. I mean, everybody can think of, I was blessed to walk the catwalks. And I enjoyed in Paris, Milan, London, New York. It was incredible. But what I loved was watching a designer take a piece of muslin and take it and drape it on a body and pinning and suture and draping. And then all of a sudden it become something of a beautiful pattern that became a beautiful garment that became something of a woman's dream to have in her closet. And I thought, God, I love the concept of completion concept because you see something and it's progress. I think I love that most that that part about it the most was watching progress. So after modeling for 20 plus years, my husband and I were married and he says, what do models like to do once they're done modeling? Well, that was the name of our first brand. What do models prefer to do after being a model? So the first brand we had cosmetic company was models prefer, and it was a huge success at QVC. And then when I came to HSN, we renamed the brand YBF, your best friend products. You'd tell your best friend. And I've never named my brands. Some people that have celebrity status will name their brands after them and rightfully so, or have a license with their name on it. It's brilliant to be able to do that. But I wasn't a household name as a model. I was a catalog model, a runway model did covers, yeah, and it was incredible, but never so superstar celebrity. So when I named my brands, I always said the name should be the claim. In marketing, the name should be the claim because then people remember what you're selling. So my first brand was Models Prefer. What do models prefer? Well, it could have been anything, lingerie, skincare. Uh, look at Cindy Crawford. She does furniture. What do models prefer? It could have been anything. And then our second brand, YBF, your best friend beauty is products you'd want to tell your best friend about 100 percent uh, no no carcinogenics no cancer and all paraben free and they have products you'd really want to share with a friend so that's where i went from modeling 20 plus years became a wife a year later became a mother started my first company for 14 of 12 and a half years well two years i i did I, I was an apprentice. I worked in a, in a warehouse. I picked, packed, wrapped, and strapped. I did warehousing. I read the forklift. I drove the semi. My parents are cattle people. They were, in, we were in the ranching business our whole life. So I had always driven my dad's 18 wheel semi. So I knew exactly what I was doing in a 53 foot semi. So people would see me product. You, you, you design your product. You pick your product up at your warehouse. You take it to your freight to the your, your containers, whatever, I, or, or a straight shift, whatever, a refrigerator truck in the summer if you had lipstick. And I'd take them to the docks. I'd pick them up from the dock. Then I'd take them to QVC and back right up in the bag for and unload my own freight. And then the next day I'd go on air and sell it. People you are, are like, something you are else, aren't you? You are amazing. <laughs> <laughs> As women, we're like, if you want it done right, you just got to do it. <laughs> At least the first couple of years until you know you get it right. So working on the assembly line at a, a really cool makeup factory out in Long Island, New York. And we lived in Connecticut at the time. And so once I did that two-year hiatus and learned production, uh, learned every process and sales in cosmetics, then we started our own cosmetic product. And I started with one item, I believe it or not, on a credit card with American Express and took one product and took it to shopping channel and sold out of everything. And I'm like, oh my God, I love this business. I love it like no tomorrow. I mean, instant gratification. I knew I wanted to be in TV. I knew it was for me because I could really talk to the consumer. I watched one of your talks and you talk about how the home shopping networks, when they began, that was social media for the time before Facebook, before all of these things. You were an international Ford model for over 20 years. How did that work prepare you for being an award-winning business creator and a top international business woman, largely responsible for the number one global cosmetic line in direct sales on six TV networks in 11 countries with over $300 million in cosmetic and apparel sales. You talked about mentorship. What else about that work as a model for 20 years, an international model, shaped that phenomenal success that you have had? And you know what I think it was, Carolyn? And I, I, I just, now that you made me think about it, no one's really ever made me ask me that question before. Even when I did my TED Talk, I never even thought about this in the presentation. But thank you for asking it the way you did, because it really made me think what it was that, that made me, as an international model, know that I wanted to be a business entrepreneurial woman in today's world. It was, I heard no. I heard no 
there were so many times as a model, you don't get every gig or casting you go on. And whether it's print or runway or whatever it is, you, you hear no so many times as a model. And actresses are the same way or actors. They're, it's, it's like you're not afraid to hear no. I think in today's society, especially with maybe with the, our younger generation, they don't hear no. They, they, we, as parents, we've even not even let them hear no. I mean, I even take that on myself. I mean, we give so much to our kids, so much to this younger generation, that it's, it's probably, I was used to hearing no, and I was, I was used to losing. I mean, I was a, I was an athlete my whole life, basketball, track and field, and there were some days that I didn't perform well, and I knew I didn't put all my effort in at practice so that I would perform well the next day, and it, it showed. And when you don't always win, it's actually a good thing. People think, oh, you want to be successful your whole life. Failure's not great. But some of the best things I've learned in my life have come from hearing no and some of my failures. Because I really learned so much more than from my failures than I ever did from my successes. Yeah, Darren Hardy makes a big point. He says consistently that success is paved the road to it with failures. That's the road to it. Yeah. So I love how you say that. That's really great. I want to go back to. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I want to go back to this point about no and about your drive to succeed. If I have this right, <laughs> you were going to appear on Home Shopping Network and you had your inventory. Was this the first million dollars worth of inventory that went down in the ocean? Can you tell us that whole story? How to no, set that up for us? That's yeah, th this is a great <laughs> entrepreneurial, this is this is the it, entrepreneurial story, is it not? Please share this, this is great. It is, it is, it is. So you're, you're so, you've, so, you're so well, kind of done your homework. So I tell the story to, to entrepreneurs because I try and tell them and tell them you, say, you sound like you're at the bottom of the I'm ocean right now. <laughs> yes, I feel like I'm at the bottom of the ocean. You sound like you're way down there with Dory and the gang. We're going to do Finding Stacy instead of Finding Nemo. You're way down there with Dory and the gang. Let's see. Let's, yeah, you're good. That's good. You're ready. You got better? Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Great. Yeah. Great. So, um, I, I, Carolyn, thank you so much for asking me that question because it's so funny. You know, you always talk about, oh, successful, and you've done all this million business and been all hundreds of hours of television, but people don't ever hear about the good, the bad, and the ugly. I think it's important as entrepreneurs that we, and, and, and as women business owners, that we have to share everything that can actually happen to you when you go into business. You just don't see it coming. So you're talking about uh, when you bring up the, the million dollars worth of inventory. Um, I had a purchase order. It was like number three in my, like the third PO I had from QVC. And we were going strong and things were going good. And I had put all my inventory on a ship that was coming from Korea to the state. And I was so excited. It was our first big PO we'd ever written to a, 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 a vendor of supply chain. And truly, you're only as good as your supply chain. They did everything right on their end. They put it on the ship. It was coming over. I had plenty of time for my freight. I didn't need to pay 10 times more by sending it air freight. I could send it sea freight. And we got it on the ocean and there was a tsunami. There's like a storm. You don't expect this thing to happen. And my container must, it was a 40 foot container filled. It must have been at the top of these stacked freighters when you see that in the ocean. And there was a storm and my container fell off the ship. And of course, I'm a nervous wreck when I get the call in the middle of the night and it says, oh my gosh, we're so sorry. Okay, so who's calling me? It's my freight forwarder sitting in New Jersey saying, your freight, uh, we just found out uh, a day ago that your freight is sitting at the bottom of the sea. And I'm like, what? And they're like, yes, we're so sorry, Stacey. Oh, by the way, we forgot to insure it. <laughs> so... In all ultimate wisdom, first of all, you're pulling out your hair. A, if you miss your show time on a TV shopping network, more than likely you can be fined, which can happen, and it does happen because their inventory is airtime. And if your freight doesn't make it to the network on time to the, to the warehouses, then you can't either go on air and your show's canceled or you're fine for 10% of your purchase order. So it's like first of out of the box, you're a $100,000 fine. That's 10% of a million dollars. That's that's what you're looking at. Not to mention now you've lost time 
with your freight not making it to the States. And now you're thinking I'm going to lose my show with the other $3 million worth of inventory that's going in those hours. Now I'm going to have to sit and wait on that. So now I can't pay my supply chain for the balance of that $3 million. Not to mention, I was more than blessed with my supplier the, of the freight that had been lost at sea. He was going to probably let me. He's cool. He's, I know him. He's I, you know, been working with him a couple of years at that point. He was going to say, States, don't worry about it. We'll make it right. But you never know. People could have called my cards. On, they could have called me in on everything. Could have called the fine. They could have canceled the show. All my suppliers would have said, okay, we're, we're you know, net 30. You've got to pay us. Well, I hadn't sold the product, and I wasn't going to get the product, and I wasn't going to get my airtime. How was it going to pay my supply chain? So now I'm looking at a $4 million problem, $3 million in inventory that's sitting in a warehouse getting ready to put, be put on 53-foot semis to go to my network, and $1 million of lost inventory. That day I learned that you are only as good as your reputation, and you're only as good as your word. Those people trusted my husband and I implicitly, they didn't even second guess that I wasn't going to be, be, do it them right. I was going to make right of the problem. They knew that. And I, they had my back. But everything in that instant could have gone wrong had I, for once, never paid my suppliers or I was late. I treated people with less than kindness. <laughs> Why would they have done me a favor? But in that day, I learned more than anything else that we ever do is you're only as good as your word and how you treat others. Because those people, they came to bat for me and they're like, don't worry about it. It's all going to be fine. The network was fine. They let me go on. They let me to sell. My supplier in, in Korea airfitted the product for me. He knew how like devastated I was because I paid for that product. Now it's at the bottom of the sea and I have no insurance on it. My freight forwarder forgot to insure it. FOB, they forgot to freight on board. They forgot to insure it from Asia to America. It was an easy mistake that happens. That's why you always have to dot all your I's, cross all your T's, and make sure you have a good communications with everyone you work with, from your freight forwarders to your suppliers to your supply chains to your trucking companies. Everybody, you, if you're going to get in business and you think you're going to hand it off to people and they're going to do your business like it's their business, never. You've got to know it from soup to nuts. And then later when you learn it, Carolyn, you know you can delegate. But until you know your business and God forbid something goes wrong and somebody calls you in the middle of the night and you've never worked in it day to day and you don't know what to do, that's your worst nightmare. So it's always good to be hands on and then learn to delegate later. But that's a, that's a lesson I learned early and I will never, ever forget that lesson because it could have cost me my whole business and my whole entrepreneurship. And I would have probably, if I had been had to, to pony up all that money right when all that happened and pay all those people and they didn't trust me, I'd, I'd have been a bankrupt. And I probably would have never continued to be an entrepreneur. I'd have probably gotten so like just busted that I would have said, I can never do that. I could never go through that again. I mean, that $4 million is a lot of money to have to try and find overnight. <laughs> Powerful, powerful learning and sharing. Thank you for that. That is just such an entrepreneurial. That's just like a, I don't even know what to do with that. That's like a Hall of Fame entrepreneurial thing that happened to you. Hall of Fame, Hall of Fame. You have a choice now. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely a gold medal winner, that one. We can go two ways. I'm going to, because I know you're pressed for time, and we're going to, I'm going to let you choose. We can do the Grace Kelly eyebrow story. Or we can do the Home Shopping Network. You have two minutes to go live, and you sold all the product in 22 <laughs> minutes and defied odds. So uh, you can tell them both, actually. You can just tell them both I'll, if you I'll wish. Really okay, so when, I, when we first started, I developed an eyebrow pencil because I have no eyebrows, and people, when they watch me on TV, know that I have no eyebrows, and they're drawn on. But they look really natural, and people are like, oh, my gosh, how do you do that? And I found a way to make a pencil lead where it actually made your brows look natural. But even more, one step further, it changes up to 22 shades depending on the pressure you apply. So it doesn't matter if you're a redhead, if you're salt and pepper, if you're brown hair, black hair, blonde, it doesn't matter if you're ash or golden blonde, it doesn't matter, it changes and it, it, it's like a chameleon. It changes to your hair color and skin tone every time. So how many have we sold of those? 13 million and counting. We're almost at 14 million eyebrow pencil sold number one eyebrow pencil in the world so that's how that happened but it came about because i had no brows and how did that happen 
I was on a photo shoot in my early stages of modeling, and I was doing a shoot in Monte Carlo with Grace Kelly at, I'm sorry, not with Grace Kelly. I was in Monte Carlo doing a photo shoot at the castle in Morocco. And it was, and Monte Carlo is just a beautiful place. It's just a, it's a, it's a beautiful place. And I'm in awe, I'm young. And the makeup artist is actually Grace Kelly's makeup artist. She and her, everybody was gone for the week. And we were there at the castle doing the shoot for Mary Claire magazine. It was incredible. I was on the cover, 14 pages, but I didn't know it at the time. It was, I just thought it was going to be a one page shoot. So here I get the cover in 14 pages. Then this is why on the photo shoot, the makeup artist asked me, do you, after, you're not going to meet Grace Kelly, but if you could choose anything, I'm like, I don't know. She's so beautiful. Just make me look like her. Cause that's what I'm supposed to look like in this castle. Well, the day four, Grace Kelly walks in the door. Nobody expected her to be there. She met all of us. She was so gracious. She was iconic. And she left, the, she left and she lit up the room as she entered. And as she left, she took, it's almost like she took the light with her because she was such a bigger than life persona. And the makeup artist turns to me and he goes, oh my God, now you saw her. What do you want? I said, I want brows like Grace. He goes, I want to give you brows like Grace too. Let me just shave off the one, your brow on the end. Don't worry, baby girl. It'll grow back. You'll be fine. And I'm like, okay, no worries. No worries. I'm young what do I know? So he takes off my brows. Well, lo and behold, that was almost 35 years ago. My brows never to this day have grown back on the ends. The tail's completely gone. And just the beginning of the brow is there. So that hint is what made me develop. And usually it happens out of, out of necessity, we develop products and services. I developed that eyebrow pencil and I've had it on TV for over two decades. And it's that brow pencil. That's my iconic product, the core unit on my line that made my whole business. And it really set me apart from other brands. And I found my niche. So then that was how great that happened. But this is how that was a mishap. So now listen, Carolyn, to the other mishap. So I've just had our baby. Knox is like, Oh gosh, she's like three months old. She's like newborn. We're living in Long Island at the time. David stays home, my husband with Knox. And so he and baby are at home. And I go to the network. Now it's my first time to be on QVC. I started at HSN at that, in the very beginning, but then buyers switched, things happened and I went to QVC. So I end up at QVC and it's my first live show at QVC and it's my first hour. At HSN in the very beginning, I only had eight, 10 and 12 minute spots with just that eyebrow pencil. So now I've got a whole brand, fast forward a year and a half later, I've got a whole brand of cosmetics that I've developed and I'm gonna be on QVC. I'm so excited, I can't even see straight. But my husband says, don't worry, I'll stay home with the baby. It's all good. You go ahead because you can't have Knox in the green room and you going on to perform. So I'm like, okay, honey, I'll be fine. I'll be good. It's all good. He's going to watch me from, he's going to watch me from uh, home in Long Island. So I go to QVC and I'm in the green room and I'm getting ready. And then one of the guest uh, coordinators comes in and says, uh, Ms. Shefflin, you're going to be on in about 30 minutes. And I'm like, oh gosh, my hair's still in rollers and I don't have my makeup on yet. I mean, I'm waiting for the makeup artist to come and do my hair and, they, and they're not here yet. And, and, and they're like, don't worry. It's all good. They'll be in here. They're really quick. 20 minutes. She'll be set. I'm like, okay, great. So my hair's in roller, no makeup. I call my husband. I'm like, Dave, David, oh my God. You know, we've worked for months. We know exactly what we're going to do. We've done the storyboard. I'm going to go out on air. I'm going to talk about application techniques and tips and trade secrets and everything I learned as an international model and women are going to get it and it's going to be great. But guess what, honey, my hair's still in rollers and I have no makeup on it. And I have to go on little like 30 to 35 minutes live TV because you know what? Maybe this, maybe this is just, this is one of those moments. Let's just think about this. He goes, every day I'm in the car with you. We're running to the warehouse. We're doing this. You're going to a meeting in New York from, he goes, and you're always doing your makeup in the car because you're always doing it on the go. Why don't you do it like that on TV? And I'm like, no, no, no. He goes, Stacy, they're going to show your covers. They're going to see the magazines. They're going to know you walked all the catwalks. They're going to build your credibility. They're going to see what the after looks like. Go on and really teach women something. Now we didn't know what a live tutorial meant back then. 
This is how crazy it was. We didn't know what engagements were, connecting. We didn't know what relationship was. We knew what transparency was, but we didn't know that you could do that through the television screen, really make a connection with a female viewer and, and make her want to be a part of the sisterhood. So I went on TV with no makeup on, my hair and rollers, and I look at, I'll never remember, forget, remembering looking at my host. She was the senior host at the time at QVC. Jane Rudolph Tracy's her name. And I was looking at her and she is like, eyes are big as silver dollars, Carolyn. She didn't know what the heck's going on. I'm walking out and coming here to sit next to her at this sales positioning. And she goes, and here we have Stacey Shefflin. She had just said, international model, introduce me. You're going to learn the best tips, tricks, and trade secrets from this model. And wait until you see her, ladies and gentlemen. She is so gorgeous. Well, I come walking on this onto the live set and Tracy's, J Jane says to me, Stacy. We're on a live set. And I'm like, I know, Jane. She goes, and your hair's in rollers and you're not, you don't have your makeup on. What are, what are we doing here? Because we, everybody knew I was coming out hair and makeup ready. And I said, you know, I got to thinking while I was sitting in the green room that the most difficult thing for us as women is to actually learn how to do our hair and makeup. We learn in school science and math and history. And we talk about men and mimosas and we talk about everything but we don't talk about how do you really get the look and really show one another how to do that. This, remember, these are the days before YouTube. It's 1997. Nobody has a clue on how to learn from another human being watching them do. We're used to sitting at a department store in a chair, a woman doing this, writing some notes on a piece of paper and handing it to us and saying, good luck, honey. When you get home, I hope you can do that. And thank you for buying hundreds of dollars worth of product at my counter. So I brought the counter onto the set and into her living room. And she sat there for 30 minutes watching from across 110 million people now on, on watch QVC. 110 min, 10 million people are watching it. And you're like, but they don't, they're not buying. Carolyn, panic, it's panic attack. Now, I don't know this. It's not back in the day when I had an IFB in my ear and I, the director and producer could talk to me. I was a newbie. They would have never done that. Today, I have earphones in my ear and I, IFBs and I can hear them talk to me and tell me what's going on at any given minute. But the, the host is panicking. No numbers are, are, nobody's buying anything. And my buyer who's sitting up in the green room calls my husband and says, oh my God, I think you're going to have to like sell your house. I mean, gosh, I mean, they may even come and repo the car out of the yard. We have got millions of dollars worth of product behind Stacy, and we've not made one sell. I don't know what's going on, it's 30 minutes. So all of a sudden, Jane Rudolph Tracy, the host, goes and says, we're going to go to break. Ladies, we're going to go to break. And remember, you can, you can buy some of these products that you've seen Stacy putting on in the first half hour. Go ahead and, and pick up a few things and give it a try. We go to break. No lie, Carolyn. We come back literally like two minutes later. It's a two-minute break talking about other shows coming up. And I know for sure they were going to probably take me off set within those two minutes. We sold everything out. Everything was gone. There wasn't a piece left, maybe 12 of a lipstick, 12 pieces of a lipstick. But we're talking hundreds of thousands of dollars gone in a two-minute period. And what had happened is the host comes back from, and she goes, what? What? She's talking to herself. And I'm like, oh, excuse me, Jane, what are you saying? And she goes, oh, I'm talking to the producer right now. He's telling me in my ear we have no product left. Oh, actually, we have a couple of lipsticks left. But everything from Models Prefer is gone. Well, I was like, I've only been on for 30 minutes. I have a 50-minute show. You know, 50, it's 60 minutes, but really 50 minutes by the time you add all the breaks and introduction in. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, I've done, I've done something wrong. I've sold out of everything. But really, it was like such a great thing. We took question and answer for the next 15 minutes. Women called in and said, nobody's ever done this. No one's ever told us how to get it, get the look. No one's ever showed us how to get it done, told us what our skin tone is, told us what shape our eyes are, our cheeks, our face shape, our lip shape, why these things matter, why we should try these things. And customers had become now girlfriends. We had a conversation. And I think that's when, for me, it all clicked that we are a sisterhood and we have to support and mentor and help one another. The buyer then in the green room calls my husband, David, and says, well, you don't have to worry about selling the house and they aren't going to repo the car. Stacy sold everything. We want to double the order. We'll see you back here in 40 days. 
That was the first time the network for me. When I talk to you, I'm just going to have one of those easy buttons on my desk that I keep hitting. Say, amazing, 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 amazing. <laughs> Shut up, shut up, you keep talking, you keep talking. No, it's, it's amazing, amazing, man. But you know what? We're going to roll through this. I give you so much credit. These are the stories and the lessons that the audience will just absolutely devour. And on this large scale, it works. You know, you made it work. It's fabulous stories. You're leaving shortly for shows in Italy and Germany, speaking of shows. Please tell us about the shows and your role with the shows really honored to do international sales. I absolutely love it. We're in Australia and New Zealand, like you said in the beginning of the show, UK, Canada, uh, Italy, Germany, Dubai, starting Russia, actually, later in the, uh, in about 60 days, we'll be having our first show in Russia. And I've never been there. So that'll be quite different. But what I think I love is that the Italian and German market, as big as Shopping Channel is in America, it's almost like even though they've been doing it for 20 of the 40 years we've been doing it in the U.S., uh, Germany has had their network for 20 years, Italy's had their network for about 10. They're a sister, agent, uh, sister network. It's called HSE 24. It's almost like starting over for me because when I go there, I get so almost a rush because they're so excitable. They're, we've, we've done it for so long in America it's kind of like maybe we've just done it for so long. But when you go to America, to Europe and they've done it for 10 and 20 years, it's still like the beginning for them. So they're open to change. They're open to ideas. They're open to creative thinking and thinking out of the box and saying, oh, you do your shows like this in America? Oh, we try it here. I mean, they're really open and not they're not risk averse because they I guess they trust that those of us are vendors that come to the foreign networks, they, they trust that if we've been on air in America for two decades, we kind of probably know what we're doing and we never guide them or lead them astray. So I think I love that most. Now, when I'm on the networks over there, I have an earpiece, an IFB in one ear, and I have a translator. And as I speak in my language, English, the translator speaks over top of me, but you still hear me. You still hear my excitement. You still hear me a little bit in English so that if you understood English, you could probably put your mother language out of your head and listen to me in English and you'd be just fine because then they, they do that so that the vendor, myself and others like me, you can hear the passion in our voice, the excitement and the love we have about explaining the product and its uses. So that's unique. So I have an Italian translator. I have a German translator and they've become my best friends. Now I lived in Italy for almost four years and I lived in Germany for six years. So I had between the time I was in Paris, I was also living in Hamburg, Dusseldorf and Munich. So I sprechen Sie Dutch. I speak a little bit of German, but funny enough, they want me to speak in English because as foreigners, we love hearing the European accents and the Australian, the UK, British accents. Same in, in the European countries. They love hearing our language. So that even though I speak Italian and I speak German, they would prefer I speak in, in English. So I do. But I love, love every moment. I'm, I'm on rotation. What they call rotation is I do each of these networks six times a year, every other month. So I'm on an every other month, 45 day rotation. And so when I'm in the U.S., I start my U.S., then I go like Canada, UK, Australia. Then I jump to Italy and Germany. And next we'll have Russia in there. So it's every month I'm, I go to at least three or four of the networks and then it rolls into the first of the next month. We're definitely on the go all the time. You are the busiest woman in show business. You're on the plane all the time in this country as well. It's amazing. You mentioned the American Dreams Academy. Are there any other events that the Sharp Female Entrepreneurs listening should tune into, or is that the primary one you want them to focus on for at least the purpose of this well, interview? I, absolutely. I love that we're going to focus on the American Dreams and the Academy. And like I said, as we at coming up and people submitting their products, actually submit your exciting dream products to us now. And then if we see that we, you have a great product and we think you should come to our free Academy, the next one that will come up will probably be in the next 60 days. We'll let you know about that and invite you also to the Academy. It's not like if you submit your product to Women's Leadership Live now on our website, you don't still get invited to the Academy. So open yourself up to that. But I think one of the most important things is we've understood, and Debbie and I have sat and talked since Linda's now helping run the country and make it a better place, which is fabulous. Debbie and I have sat down with a, a, a group of women 
our advisory team. And if you go to our Women's Leadership Live website and you look at our advisory team, they're pretty, you go to the about section. And then once you get into the about section, then go and look at our advisory team and read through those. We've got a couple of men on there. You'll look at Joel and, and Joseph, but look at the other 10 women and what they've done. And we've come together and we've thought, what is so different about today? Instead of maybe not having the time to go to a conference, how do we learn? How do, how do human beings today learn? Well, they learn on their own time in their own location, which can be anywhere from a Starbucks to their home, to a library, their car, with our, all our smart devices today, we can learn anywhere, anytime. So Debbie and I put our heads together and we talked about it with our focus group and our advisory team. And we said, instead of having conferences and blowing up big hotels and bringing people all in and doing all this stuff, and it's like such a like show on the road, besides our American dreams, what can we offer them? And Debbie said, curriculum. Let people learn on their own time, in their own space, when they want to learn and what they want to learn. So we're going to start our new curriculum. You can choose your study. Do you want to be product to market? Do you want to have media training? Do you want to go on TV? Do you want to do interviews? Do you want to be on radio? Do you want to do podcasts? How can you talk to someone so you get your point across and people understand? So that's media training. And Carolyn, we totally want you to help us with that because it's your expertise and it's what you know. Love but we to. want to... Oh, thank you. We want to offer these as services to women and men, enlightened men that really want to learn the processes. And plus, there'll be a whole bunch of other stuff under Debbie's curriculum about social media and having influence on the web and how you create a brand without sometimes people even ever meeting you. That's our next step. From conference, we went to American Dreams to an academy, and now we're going to offer an academy online where people can learn at their own pace and their own time and their own comfort of their home or their business or, or on the go. That's fantastic. Is that going to be open to everyone or just Absolutely. your applicants? Okay, so it's not just Absolutely. the applicants that, with the product. That's great. Getting all the bugs out as you want to. You want to get it right. But we would love to ask for your advice and your input and support, and we'd love to have you as one of our mentors helping people. I mean, love how to. many people want to have a podcast? They just don't know how to go about it or do it the right way, and then they spend all that money and it's not as successful as they'd like. And that was my next question. How can we, the listeners, support hey. Women's Leadership Live? How can we do that for you? Oh, that's so um, so touched that you offer. And thank you. That very grateful. Most people never think how to help support others in business. And I think it's the, the, the biggest thing we leave behind when we don't engage and tell others about other great opportunities. I would say send you and your friends and everyone from Boom Take. Just go and take a look at womensleadershiplive.com and tell a friend about it. If you have an aunt or an uncle or a sister or a brother or a grandmother or the gal next door and the guy in the cubicle next to you, that has a product or an idea, or they just want a little bit of mentoring, have them go to the website and check it out. And like I said, it will be changing. There's a lot of things that we need to update in the next 30 to 60 days, and people will see that. But it's really all about just help yourself and help others. So as we wind up the interview and we close out, do you have parting words of wisdom for the listeners? Yes. Older women, please support and mentor younger women. They are our future, and when we give them the tools, the strategy, the techniques on how they can be better human beings and hardworking and have great work ethic and really put their mind behind their dream, they can have anything. I wish somebody had mentored me very early. I mean, I didn't get mentorship until I was about 35 years old, and I'm 56 now. What I could have done in those first 20, 25 years of someone really helping support me and what I wanted to do, I, who knows where I would be today. I mean, you just can't imagine just giving someone words of inspiration, what it can do to their soul. If you just say, I think you can do it. I really think what you have is a great idea. Let me tell you a few things I think you should do. Believe me, if they're worth their ounce of salt of you helping them, they will listen. But most times they will not ask for help. I found that women under about 40 years old it's difficult for us to ask for help because we think we get to do it all on our own. So if you see a woman that has really great promise, maybe she won't ask you, but you should say, God, I, re I really want to help you. If there's any way I can help you, then she'll be like, oh my gosh, people really want to help me. It really makes such a difference for both of you. That is so beautifully said. Blessings to you. Blessings for this interview. This oh, was absolutely fantastic.
fantastic. Thank you so much, Carolyn. It's been my honor. And thank you so much for coaching and consulting so many people. I mean, you are the real deal. You are a transparent woman. You're, you talk over the backyard fence to all of us. And that's the hardest thing for some people to do is just be authentic and real. And you're so that. And I so enjoyed every minute of this interview together with you on your podcast. Thank you so much. Exact same, Stacy. Thank you. And thank you for tuning in to the Boom Tank Business Show. I so appreciate you listening, and you know I do. If you like the show, please leave a five-star rating and some nice comments on iTunes or subscribe on the free podcast listening app Stitcher for Android users or Google Play. And tell a friend. Join Boom Tank's email list at boomtank.com and download your free instant audio training. It's two audio downloads. The first one, 10 top life and business lessons from my expert guests, and the second, a super success meditation you are going to love. Be sure to check out my coaching and consulting tab on boomtank.com and the speaking tab to book me as your next professional speaker or featured guest. Catch my live streams on boomtank.com or on boomtank's YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash user forward slash the boomtank. Until next time, free your mind, unleash your spirit, build your life, create your business. It really is your show. See you right here on the next episode. Thank you for tuning in to the Daily Boom Tank Business Show. Go to BoomTank.com and get our exclusive tips and ideas to help you achieve success. It is time for you to launch your dream business and life now. 